There's got to be a better way to keep my glasses from fogging up. Stand by. Welcome back to the shop. I'm James and uh, we're gonna work on a problem. If you're a young, if you're a young person or if you're blessed with perfect vision, um, you're probably not going to have this problem and oh, guys like me hate you. Well, we don't really hate you much, but it's just another thing you have to, have to kind of deal with uh, if you've got glasses or if you're getting into that that uh, stage where you need reading glasses and that's trying to keep things from fogging up. I just finished the first half of a two week course on aerospace welding and our facility is very well ventilated. It's not air conditioned, but it's very well ventilated. And uh, even with the ventilation cranked up, when the heat index is 110, it's just, God, it's just freaking miserable. So, um, I, you know, I know the trick with, uh, you know, with shaving cream on the, on the inside of your sensor, on, the, on your, the sides of your glass. I mean, I know all those tricks. I've used all those little anti-fog kind of compounds. Um, and over the long haul, I just, I have not had a lot of success with them. So, we're going to try something today. And the... The whole problem is that as you are breathing inside your hood, especially if you're doing long runs, uh, your breath gets trapped up on the inside of this thing. And when that happens, it can start to condense either on your viewing screen or your glasses or both. And that is the no bueno. So what I'm going to try to do is, I was talking to a friend of the channel, Jay, and uh, I asked him, I said, hey, how small of a fan uh, do you think I can find that would allow me to move air down across that screen and down across the front part of my face uh, to keep my, my glasses from fogging up? And about... Two minutes later, he shows me this picture. And we just happen to have a couple of these little teeny tiny 12 volt fans. And so we're going to do an experiment and see if we can't get this fan uh, in the correct position with a decent enough amount of voltage uh, to move air across my face for a decent enough period of time so that I don't go blind while I have, you know, the power of plasma on a stick in my hand. So let's get things reconfigured up here and we'll start showing you what we're thinking about doing. What we're going to do is we're going to make our access a little easier so that we're not fighting this bad boy all the time. So with that out of the way, this is the inside of my mask. As you can see, I've got the, we would call them diopters, I've heard them called cheaters, I've heard them called magnifiers, reading glasses. These are three and a half power uh, because I am a horrible combination of very, very blind uh, as well as working on teeny, 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 tiny stuff. Um, so these are, these are in my helmet most of the time because I'm, I'm TIG welding. So there's a, uh, there's a couple of different designs that are out there that are commercially available, but this is Rattle Can Fab Shop. And the whole idea behind the word Rattle Can is that um, we are doing things kind of on the cheap. Like if you're gonna paint something uh, the cheap way out sometimes, 
is just the rattle can, you know, spray can. So we're going to try to do this ourselves instead of spending, you know, 50, 75, 100, 150 bucks. We're just not going to do that. So what we're looking at possibly doing is taking this little fan, and I'm not even sure what this is out of. Um, like I said, I just called Jay up, and he magically produced a couple of these. Um, it's a DC brushless fan, runs 12 volts at 1.1 watts. So what we're going to try to do is see if we can't get this mounted something right around there and then have a battery pack kind of up in this area. Uh, I have a couple ideas for that. First thing we want to do is we want to see if, um, if we can get this fan moving and if this fan, if we can get it to run on a nine volt battery, that's, I'm totally okay with that. I don't have to have it running at full tilt. I just need enough to get that air moving and get the condensation gone. Now, we may have to run it on, on two batteries. Uh, first, in order to get enough airflow going, and then second enough to get uh, some longevity out of this. Because I don't really want to be having to change a battery every four minutes, because that would kind of that'd kind of be dumb. So let me clean some wires off the end of this, and uh, we'll just we'll run a couple of tests here. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have a decent battery to work with. Nine point six nine volts. That'll do. So. Are we moving? Yep, we're moving. Remember to get the polarity right because this is a brushless fan. So if you get the polarity wrong, it's not going to run. Now the question is, I'm putting this up right above my glasses. It would actually probably be about there. Would one do it? It might. So I think our test, I think our test piece, we're going to do it with just one battery. So where we're going to try to put this is right on that shelf. And I think the easiest way to do that, just for testing, is your friend and mine, the hot glue gun. And while we're waiting for the, the glue gun to heat up. Um, I have these little these uh, little metal fabricated pieces. Um, stainless? Could be. It has a teeny 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 tiny amount of um, magnetism to it. Not anything like that like that that's just reg <clears throat> regular uh, it's just regular steel so I'm gonna guess this is some kind of stainless that and six bucks will get you a crappy cup of coffee somewhere um, oh here's your free tip if you wanna make your third hand or whatever you wanna call it a little more uh, useful is you just take a neodymium magnet, put it on the bottom of it, and then it'll stick darn near anywhere you put it. <clears throat> Very helpful if you're soldering. Well, what I was doing, I was having to solder uh, uh, an incorrectly wired uh, lighting array that had already been hung and nobody wanted to unhang it for me to fix it. So, oh. Chopper going overhead. Don't know if you can hear that or not. So, anyways, what I did was I just in, I'm increasing the the pinch pressure on this, just kind of folding it in here like that to make it a little more angular. Then I can slip this nine volt battery in there, 
and at least for testing purposes that should give us enough time to figure out if that's going to work. It has these little tabs that were used to mount it on something and we're going to flatten those out because that will give us some additional holding power and we can just hot glue this right up onto the inside of that helmet. Again, the hot glue stuff's great if you're prototyping stuff. If you're trying to see if something works, when you get done looking at it, you can just take it right off. You can peel it off. It's not a big deal. Then you can come up with some more elegant solution um, to make it permanent. So. telling you, hot glue for the win. Probably would have been nice if I put the one that already had the stripped motor in it, wouldn't it? All right, we're gonna go ahead and pull this out and make it a little easier access. Um, this, you just pull on this knob and then it's just, a, it's just a little hex screw. You undo that. And then this whole cartridge will lift out. We'll put that off to the side. So again, we're working right up there. Now I've got this cleaned off. I took some rubbing alcohol, or some actually some denatured alcohol, and cleaned this off. Make sure we get any kind of dirt or anything that will make the hot glue not want to stick. Clean the top of this. <clears throat> right in between glue sticks, which makes a, a pain in the butt. That is not going to turn, because I think I got glue in the fan. And it's upside down on top of that. Good grief. Cut. All right, let's give this another shot. <laughs> might be fun. Oh, curved surface. All right, while I was squirreling around looking for something, I came across this. It's a uh, little nine volt battery box, which exactly just about the same height as uh, a nine volt battery. But the advantage is it's going to be much easier to get a battery in and out of there. It's just a simple press fit just like that. So uh, we are going to utilize this. So I've already cut the old, this old kind of make do battery holder. <clears throat> and we're going to get this one mounted up in the right side of the helmet. That would be very helpful, don't you think? And get that mounted right there. Then we'll get our wires connected up and then our prototype, in theory, will be done. We'll get away with doing this just until we see if it performs the way we want it to perform. And if it does, we'll take it all back apart and we'll solder wires together and then we'll heat shrink it. Then we'll knock this over time after time after time. <clears throat> Let's give that a minute to cool. Spinning like a champ. 
All right, I'm gonna put this back together off camera and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at it. All right, that didn't take very long. So now let's install our battery. Put the battery cover on. See, there is the kind of the completed assembly. Now let's put it on. All right, so I've gotten this. Um, it's it's not bad. There's a little bit of noise with it. I mean, because it's a fan, um, but it's not too bad. So uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to go over and uh, I'm going to make some welds and I'm going to do it without a mask, uh, which is going to seem kind of weird because that's, that's the way I've always done it. Um, this, is the, this is the one that I've, I've settled on. It's an ellipse uh, half face mask um, and it works great. It, it helps to keep the particulate matter out of my lung meats uh, when I'm doing woodworking and stuff. And it helps to keep the condensation off my glasses. But now, with the addition of this, um, we'll see if it if it does what we want it to do. We're also going to note the time, and we're going to see how long uh, this nine volt battery runs. So stand by. I am very happy to tell you that after uh, an hour of running uh, some autogenous and some filler rod welds, I'm good. I didn't have any problem with any condensation. I didn't even really notice uh, the sound until everything's turned off. Um, uh, you know, the, just the just the the fans on the welder mask. Uh, uh, any noise that I get uh, from this fan and uh, the, the battery's still running so uh, I think we're going to call this one a success uh, this is the uh, just the addition of one of these little 12 volt computer fans and you can see they're they're not very big at all There's the fan standing next to its power source. So for some cobbled together parts and some batteries and a little bit of hot glue, uh, I think we have solved one of our issues with, uh, with welding and that's the condensation on the lens, especially during hot weather. Uh, anyways, it's, it's just an easy and you know, an easy modification, a non-destructive modification too. We may end up putting an on and off switch and I think we can mount that with the uh, with the hot glue as well, and, and make it so you know that if we wanted to, we could take it, you know, we could remove that modification, and, and you wouldn't even know it was there. Anyways, uh, I'm James. This is Rattle Can Fab Shop. You guys have a great weekend. Cheers. I hope you found this episode educational or entertaining, or maybe even both. You might want to check this one out as well. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell to be notified when new videos drop. And if you've got comments, make sure you put them down beneath the sermon notes. Thanks for hanging out with us here at the Rattle Can Fab Shop. Y'all have a good one. Cheers.